Good morning everyone, here with Easy Jeezy. And today's project is going to be everybody's favorite. Seems like everybody wants these things to work, but almost nobody really gets them to work. Alright, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I'm just going to present to you the morning after. Yesterday went on a run with the uh, Dune Buggy Club and there were seven of us. I brought up the rear the whole day. It was probably, I didn't check my speedometer, but 150 uh, mile day. All, about half of that through uh, washboard dirt road. Uh, this is the first time I've really tested uh, Rusty in this manner and I've always uh, utilized my fiberglass dune buggy in the past and after a run like that it'd probably take me physically a day or two to recover because you're constantly uh, sucking in dirt and dust and uh, that's just the way it is so I left left this car home and it was really a pleasure to get up this morning and do my burrito run uh, in a nice running little uh, car so uh, the big question here is uh, how did the center mount Weber carburetor do on this engine in that environment well much to my surprise I am uh, it was a compromise so uh, trying to stay on track here I did not think this air cleaner setup would do jack squat I oiled it before I started in the morning I put this little foam unifilter and as you can see I got it trashed during the day going down some of the washboard I kept hearing this tapping noise I thought it was a, a shock mount or something like that but uh, I have already had this apart yesterday when I came home first thing I did was look things over and I was amazed okay I did squash my filter evidently this this top up here uh, I lost a screw in the corner and it it must have been banging. Uh, we're going through some rough stuff. The engine moves independent of the body and I could hear this thing pounding. But uh, at least the air cleaner stayed on. It did trash the filter. And a quick comment on that. You, if, if you're going to spend you know, a 50 mile or a 100 mile day or a weekend out on, on washboard dirt roads, this is the price of doing business. You're going to lose some things. It's going to cost you money. It's not like a American four-wheel drive car where you're just going out and, and they're kind of, you've adapted something, you've modified it, you've changed it, you're trying to be a uh, Joe Racer for the weekend, you're you're living the dream, you built the car, you want to go try it out, and, and these are the kinds of things that happen. So don't cry over this and don't expect that you're going to get off scot-free. It's not just a matter of putting gas in it and changing oil. That's just the way these things are. It's constant evolution. You've taken something that the factory built and you're using it for a different uh, specific purpose of your own, and these are the kinds of things you're going to face. Now, center mount carburetor, how did it do opposed to dual carburetors like you see on this engine over here, okay? Everybody wants these carburetors to work, and you see them in the Baja race cars. We've seen them all our lives, and it's like, yeah, that's what I want, that's what I want. But you say yourself, when you do it, I want it to drive like stock. I want it to drive like stock. It, it's not going to happen. It is a compromise. Did I like it? My overall view? Yeah. I want it to work. I don't want to deal with linkage. I don't want to deal with cramped space and pulling jets out of the side here. Everything's right in front of me. I had no jet issues. It took the rough. One of the most important things for me over the course of that ride was every time we stopped, this thing restarted easily and quickly. I wasn't cranking and cranking and cranking and cranking. It just fired up. It didn't always want to idle. After we'd been blasting down the road and we did stop, sometimes it would just die. It didn't want to go from from driving to uh, idle. So uh, I was uh, real happy with this and when I 
I didn't clean this. This is this is just how it was. It uh, I don't know if you can look through it here. You know, it it saved a lot of dirt sticking to this oiled cotton filter. Oh, I'm surprised. I'm really, really surprised. Um, and looking here, I didn't touch anything on the inside. If that had been leaking enough, if you look down here in this corner, you can see where some of that dirt was. But that's on the outside. See, you can see some oil. This is a piece of rust or something from the well. That's not debris right there but I'm I'm very impressed with how my air filter did and I think it helped because it was center mount it wasn't down close to the tires it was up a little bit higher um, I didn't ha I didn't do bad all my oil leaks I fixed my oil leaks I'm in shock with that I did not think that this crankcase this is the only vent I'm using and I didn't tie it into the air cleaner I thought that'd be a dripping dribbly mess and it it isn't it it everything's dry underneath here I'm I'm shocked uh, the carburetor's performance okay this is a smaller engine it has an angle 100 cam. I have about 115 pounds uh, compression on, on all four cylinders just as an average. It's all over the place but let's just say 115. Um, I have 28 millimeter Venturi's in a 40 Weber IDF carb. I'm running 55 idle jets up here and my uh, air fuel screws are out three quarters of a turn uh, I'm running the 50 accelerator pump squirters the stock ones on the mains uh, I'm running an F11 emulsion tube a 180 air correction jet um, the standard jet holder now 155 main jets seemed like they were a little rich I'm at 5,000 feet elevation and we were as high as probably 9,000 feet and I can go 3,000 feet up in an hour no problem so jetting is always a problem you can't you have to take that into consideration I didn't have the assortment of jets I would have liked to have and what I did I have these propane orifice drills and I took a 155 jet and I took a uh, the 135 jet and there was two drills in between I went the next size up I was very very gentle about how I did this I just I just I didn't try I tried not to scratch it or drill it I just put it in there to see what the known numbers were I needed something smaller than 155 and bigger than 135 because it it didn't run very well at either position so I went the next size up and I believe that was a I don't know if anybody else has these things would have been a number 56 drill um, and I can measure that with a micrometer if anybody's interested uh, so also what I did in the butterflies on the bottom it says for single center mount application to drill a hole I drilled a 564 hole in front of that and I was unclear on the directions because it said opposite the progression ports and I didn't know if they meant on the opposite side of the throttle shaft or just away from it I, I made mine right here that may or may not be good the idea is you're not supposed to have these uh, progression ports you see the little the four little holes down there below the brass nozzle those are your progression ports those should not be exposed at an idle and you should be running on your main jet easily by the time you hit 2000 rpm you should be running on your main not your idle and main and this and that the problem we're all having is the progression you get that hesitation that bog and I, I will tell you right now that this in the rough with the power on did much better than my duels if I was going at a constant speed and I just floored it or something came to a hill and I had to just 
I didn't want to shift. I just gave it more gas. It it just it seemed it didn't fall on its face, but it was real soggy. Let's call it that a soggy bottom. This carburetor setup is a soggy bottom. That's what you're going to experience when you have this. It's less maintenance. It's half the maintenance. It's in a better location. It's easier to get to. You're going to right here it says it all we want these to work does it work as good as duels no not in my opinion if you want the ultimate of performance and smoothness and power and transition and high rpm and low even idle duels port on port i'm not talking cadrons i'm talking dual ports cadrons are fine they have their place but this is the ultimate perfect setup. Now what combination you use for your size of engine can be up for debate. I like these uh, 36 Delordos with 30 Venturis. They came stock out of the box from CB Performance 20 years ago and I haven't had to make jet changes or anything and I just take them off one engine and put them on another and they work fine. Just synchronize them, keep them clean and they've been good. This thing has been a literal nightmare because what the book calls out and they tell you right up front you're asking way more of this carburetor than it was ever engineered or designed for you're asking it to handle all four cylinders and you say well it's not any different than cadrons you got cadrons with 28 venturis and and here you just got the same thing closer together you're sharing one float well i'm sorry it wasn't designed that way it doesn't work that way it tells you right in the book it was made for smaller engines and that transition circuit if you fatten it up if you want to run a fat engine okay and this here's another point with the setup I described uh, let's see about 125 miles into that ride uh, we came to a small town and I didn't know what my my gas gauge doesn't work so I didn't want to run out so I topped it off I was getting over 20 miles to the gallon in the lower gears you know I second and third gear is where I spend most of my time so I hope this information is helpful to somebody and I'm gonna be going in more details and trying to get this thing to operate better it'll idle okay and wide open throttle okay I have a little burble at a constant speed it seems to me with a cam now here's the problem Let's let's see where we're at here. Give them an explanation. The stock engine, the stock Volkswagen engine. We got one right here. Okay, in the stock engine and the stock form and the stock car with all the emissions crap on the carburetor, it worked pretty darn good. Or they wouldn't have sold them. They wouldn't have sold so many of them. If it was a turd, nobody would have kept buying them. They got 24 miles to the gallon. They were reliable. They worked year-round. And it's only when they changed hands a dozen times and, and people with no money really started trying to engineer them themselves and keep them running. But they had a different carburetor. They had a different, uh, they had this carburetor, but they had a different distributor. Now, these 009 distributors, they work on motion, on RPM. As the RPM increases, it causes them to advance. The Volkswagen used various forms of distributors, one of which was vacuum and uh, centrifugal. So, as soon as you put a cam in it, or change it it's not gonna run as good as smooth as stock and everybody says the same thing well I just want a little bit more power a little bit more power well the easiest way to feel like you're getting more power is with gearing or with losing weight these fiberglass cars are lighter in weight and they feel peppier just putting a stock engine in them but you're gonna be out there during the day and you're gonna have the sun and the dust on you um, so keep that in mind sometimes you know people the majority of people who are planning on rebuilding in the engine figure well look I've got to get uh, I want more power and I have to make these purchases anyhow why don't I get these slip-in cylinders make a 1641 out of it why don't I take this 
crummy distributor and put a 009. Everybody else has got them. And let me put a Weber cover. Let's do this. Let's do that. There's too much hype and, and bling and glitter in Hot V-Dub magazines and all these people that supply parts. They're trying to sell you merchandise. If you want a show car and you want a off-road capable car, it's going to cost you a lot of time and money. Just be prepared for that. If you're on a budget, stick with a stock engine. I have a stock cam in my 1776 with a stock carburetor that's uh, jetted a little bit fatter on the main, and I love it. I have a low compression 2 liter in my fiberglass car, and I love it. I have a stock cam in that as well, but I use ratio rockers. So, that's the... That's the crux of it, right there. Uh, and for somebody just starting out or in the, trying to make a choice as to what they're going to do, go with the smallest carburetor. I would go with the 40 versus the 44. I would go with a stock cam. If you've already got an engine with a cam in it, just be prepared. This will run, but it's not going to run as smooth as you might think you want it to run. You're going to try. You'll spend the money on jets. And I did notice through the course of the day, as the altitude changed, as the weather changed, I could feel it in the way the car performed. So, there you go. We'll, we'll have more updates on this as we go. And uh, I hope that helps somebody out there because uh, it's a fun hobby. And uh, we're all doing the same thing, struggling, fighting the fight, trying to do it on a budget. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm in seventh heaven. Coming down the other side of Pinup Pass. Yeah, Boogie's running good. Got my whole oil leaks fixed. Looks like, shoot, yeah. Got all our buggies lined up here. Stopped at the uh, Fish Creek bathroom. If we were going up to Chambers and then come back to the back way, we might, uh, might avoid some of the coming down traffic. Big discussion. Where are we going to go? Everybody's got their little spot, to, little spot of shade. Oh, it went the other way. Got the little drop off here. Little flowers blooming everywhere you look. 